Rent control in the homeless situation in San Francisco. What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Jermaine, back with another video. Let's just jump right into this. San Francisco, we got a lot of homeless people, and we also have rent control. And guess what? A lot of people around the country, they follow me, and they want to know what's going on in San Francisco. They want to know about new trends. They want to know about new apps. They want to know about just what's going on in the city, because usually... If it's going on here first, chances are it might go to another city throughout the country, right? So a lot of people like look at San Francisco and they're like, what's going on, right? Now, one thing that's very popular around the country right now is the prices of rents have just gone through the roof, right? Now, if you guys don't know, San Francisco is a, is a place with rent control, right? So a lot of places around here have rent control. Now, on the flip side, a majority of other places around the US that's having these crazy high rent increases, they don't have rent control. For example, my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, there's no rent control. So if you're a landlord, you can sort of raise the price however you want. Now, on the flip side, what does that have to do with San Francisco? So I thought I would tell a little story about a guy I knew living in San Francisco and why I think the rent control is, I don't want to say it's a problem, but I want to say a lot of people fall they, they fall in this trap with rent control and they find themselves in a situation that they just can't get out of. And it could very well lead to homelessness. Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking of moving to San Francisco, this is an extremely important video to watch, especially if you are young, okay? If you're watching this video, you wanna to move to San Francisco, your 30s, your 40s, it, it, it might be a little different. The cards may play out different for you because you're older, but if you're younger, you really want to pay close attention to this video, especially if you want to move here. Please pay me, pay, pay me attention. This is a very important video. So anyway, first off the bat, this, I actually knew someone and this I actually knew like two people, sort of the same similar situations happened to them. This is a really, really sad situation. And I don't know how we could combat this in San Francisco, right? Because there's a lot of finger pointing, right? Um, if you ever hear someone say that I don't like London Breed because London Breed doesn't get rid of the homeless situation, um, you probably shouldn't pay that person too much attention because the homeless situation in this city has been going on for 50 freaking years. And I don't even know if London Breed's 50 years old. So, so if you actually think that, you know, someone's just going to get in the office and just it's over with, it's just it, it's going to go away. That's just BS, yo. Like it's been going on for 50 years. I don't think it's just gonna go away tomorrow. I mean, it. I mean, very well, it, it, it could go away tomorrow. All right, first friend, he moved to San Francisco about, I don't know, 25 years ago. And when he first moved to San Francisco, he was young. He was around 22 years old. He was trying to figure out life. He was trying to figure out, do I wanna go to college? Do I wanna do this? Do I wanna do that? But you know what he ended up doing? He just ended up getting a job at a coffee shop and he became a barista, right? Worked in a coffee shop. Right when he first moved to the city, he moved to an area right above the Tenderloin, sort of they call it the Tender Knob. He was living in this area. He moved into a rent control unit and back then he was doing pretty well for himself. Um, he was spending about 25% of his income on housing and he loved it right he wasn't working 70 hours a week he wasn't working 60 hours a week he was working a normal like you know 40 hour a week work schedule love living in the city okay but this happens to a lot of people right this happens to a lot of people you come to the city with you know a lot of you know dreams and ambitions but you actually end up you know maybe doing you know a very very basic job but you really want to live here and you know you maybe your other ideas didn't work out, but you found a way to still live here, right? So, okay, same same thing with this this guy. You know, his rent's not not increasing, so great. Rent's not increasing, so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna continue to live here. We're gonna continue to work, but just like a lot of normal people, right? You just go to work every day, okay? You get off work, you you know you, you go sit on the couch. You maybe you go down to the bar. You wait for the weekend, you know, you go shopping, you know, you party through the weekend, you go to the club, you meet this chick, you meet this guy, and then all of a sudden, before you know it, it's Monday, you gotta go to work. Guess what? The cycle repeats itself. And guess what? Time goes on. And there's a lot of people that, you know, maybe you just have one job and, you, you know, you're cool with that job. You're not looking to get another job. You're not looking to move up. You know, you, 
I, you know, b basically, you, you, you know, you're just sort of kind of running on a hamster wheel, but it's okay because you're getting by, right? But as the years go on, what actually happens that a lot of people don't really notice is things start to get more expensive, right? Things start to get more expensive. And if your wages aren't going up, if you're not the type of person that, you know, that, that's constantly moving from job to job, well, guess what? Your, your, your wages are sort of, they're not going to go up as fast as the things around you. And it, the, the wages aren't going to increase as fast as things are getting more expensive, right? Um, I remember when I first moved to San Francisco, the lady that moved, that the lady that lived next door to us, she asked how much were we paying in rent, and we told her we're paying. I think we're paying like eighteen twenty-five in rent. Well, come to find out, I think she was paying like six hundred and eighty dollars. So she was like nervous. She was like, "Whoa, you're paying so much more than me, right?" But yeah, we are paying so much more than more than you. But also, we probably make more money than than you, you know. Or maybe, or maybe we don't, <laughs> you know, may, maybe, you know, you're paying a whole lot less in rent and you're, you make a whole lot more, but on the flip side, maybe you have to pay a lot more, right? So when you see someone else moving in next door and their rent is much, much higher than what your rent is, that puts you in a situation where like, you can't move, right? You really can't move because like if you're used to paying six hundred dollars a month and now the going rate is eighteen hundred, like how do you move in that situation, right? So you're, you're probably going to end up staying there, right? So back to the first friend, okay? This first friend, he literally got to um, a point of life where, like you know, twenty years, he's working in a coffee shop, right? Right? Rent has went up. Like everywhere around him is went up. Like rent is way more than it was when he first moved in, but he's okay because he's under rent control. The price of a cup of coffee has went up so much more than when he first moved in, right? And, and on his salary, he's living, you know, yeah, he's paying cheap rent, but he's also complaining about how like everything is more expensive. But like, just like a lot of people, like just everyone doesn't just move up everyone doesn't just move up in life right sometimes you find yourself sometimes life happens right you, you find yourself stuck at a job or you find yourself still in the situation and you look over and you see this other person and they're just doing this and they're doing that and they're doing this and they're doing that we're not all equal right let's just face it like we're not all equal like i know tons of people that are not multi-millionaires right but they work really really hard but then i know people that don't work that hard at all and they're multi-millionaires you know at the end of the day the, the, the world's not equal and you know pretty much his friend got to this this point where like he had been living in san francisco for so long okay that he pretty much lost contact with his family back home right had a brother had a sister you know he was real tight with his parents but he sort of like lost contact right and as time goes on, you know, time goes on, people move on, you know. If you take off and leave your family, guess what? Your family's, you know, after a while, they're just going to keep going on without you, right? You're just going to be gone. You know, if you come back and visit, cool, but guess what? You don't live here anymore, you know? And once you live in San Francisco for so long, it's really hard to sort of go back to go back home like i mean i've been living here for a while and it's really hard for me to go back home and this is when a person could very well get colonized by the city or colonized by san francisco and basically what this means is you get to a point where you like living in the city so much and this happens to people in new york a whole lot more than it happens here you've got to the point where you've lived in the city so much that like you almost don't even know how to operate in a normal place right now this is not really an american problem because for the most part americans don't live in cities like new york and san francisco your average american lives in a place where like you know you have to drive and it's not like an immersed place like here right you find yourself in this situation where like you just don't you, you, you're, you're older right so as as you get older you know, 35, 40, you get set in your ways. So maybe you don't want to go back home and visit your family. So you get separated from your family. Your brothers and sisters are older and they watch their kids graduate from college. So, you know, 
they're not really trying to get in your life. You know, your brother and sister is probably thinking, oh, I had a crazy brother that moved off to San Francisco. Don't know what he's doing, but I don't really talk to him. I think he works in a coffee shop or something. He's kind of a loser because he never had kids, you know? You, you know, that, that sort of thing happens, you know? And then all of a sudden you find yourself in this situation where you've sort of lost connection with a lot of people, right? You sort of lost connection with, with, with your family back home, right? So if something goes wrong, you're probably not going to go back running home because if something wasn't wrong, you probably wasn't going running back home anyway. And also, let's just throw some more things into the mix. Maybe you moved from a very conservative community, right? Maybe you moved from a place that was very, very conservative and a place where that was very, very strict and like you couldn't just be yourself, right? You come to San Francisco and it's very, very open. You can be whoever you want, right? So for the past 20 years, you've lived this open life of just being whoever you wanted to be. You wore your hair all sorts of crazy colors and, you know, you, you know, went to parties and you hang out in the gay areas and you just, you just live the life you wanted to. And everyone in your family knows that, right? They know about you and they know you're crazy and they know you don't have kids. And guess what? This is just something else that, that lets this is just something else that reminds you like I, I can never go back home. And a lot of people find themselves in this situation where they tell themselves they're never going back home. And it doesn't even take twenty years for people to even get to this point. Like I've seen like young people say this, like, been here two years and they're like, Bro, I'm never leaving this city, dude. Like I'm I, I I'm gonna die here, dude. Like it's crazy because it I almost I <laughs> It's kind of interesting to, to put it because this place for real is like a like a Disney World almost, right? It's almost like a, a Disney World for adults. And when some people get here, they like it so much that they don't want to they, they don't want to leave, right? I see tourists all the time. Like they're they're just like, bro, like this is so cool. Like you can walk places, and you can talk to people, and like yeah, like it yeah, it is cool, but it's also very expensive <laughs> you know it's very very difficult to live here and once you do live here and you you move from someone else you move from somewhere else i feel like it sort of changes you as an individual right it makes you uh, very sort of it, it just changes you it makes you sort of a stronger person but it also makes you a cold person right because you just being here and like like living here and when i say san francisco i'm not talking about the whole city right i'm talking about really i'm talking about mainly in this downtown area because there's tons of places that you can go to in this city that is not the same as the downtown area there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing neighborhoods in the city that don't have homeless people that don't have car break-ins that have beautiful homes and beautiful families and life goes on and you know it's the california living like that actually exists here you know it do, do, definitely don't exist like downtown because downtown is like a, it's like a little manhattan it's like a zoo it's like people running around like crazy but th there's a lot of neighborhoods that, that are freaking amazing around here and i also knew a second friend in sort of sort of the same similar situation happened to this friend right he was you know moved to the city got a rent control place and he was just like oh this is just what i'm gonna do my all my life and he just never moved up and guess what over time things got more expensive and he just never really did anything he never like progressed he was just like oh this is great like life is good here and then all of a sudden it just got to a point where like he just couldn't just couldn't make it anymore and i remember he had this apartment at um in the tenderloin like market and turk near near that area and i remember going there the last night visiting him and he, he was getting ready to go and it was really sad because he was so naive when he was leaving but when he was leaving he was just so like like disorgan like just he didn't even know what he didn't even know he was leaving you know i remember the landlord came up and was like you're gonna you're gonna leave right you're gonna leave right and the guy was like yeah and this was like like late at night the landlord was like 
you know, it was like eight o'clock at night. Like, like, you're gonna leave, right? You're gonna leave, right? And the guy was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was literally moving out like a few more boxes. And he had a friend that lived in the city and she came over and he was like, can you take these boxes and just keep them in your storage for me? Because, you know, I'm gonna get them, but I'm moving across country. And I think he was moving to like Vegas or something like that. And he was just so disorganized. And once again, like the rent control situation will, will, will have you like, you know, live in one way, but you just can't live that way forever if you don't like do anything, right? You don't do anything. So back to the first friend, back to the first friend. So you might wonder what happened to him? How did he get homeless? Well, he ended up getting into some sort of accident, right? And then he, then he got into a fight and then, you know, that accident, you know, he was off work for a couple of days and he got into a fight and then it made the accident way worse than he got into. And then he fell behind on his bills. Then he lost his job and then he was late on his rent for like weeks. And then the weeks turned into months and they tried to work with him. And the guy had been living there for like, you know, 20, I think he was like 20 or 25 years. I can't exactly remember. The place was just full of stuff. The landlord did not want to kick him out because the landlord, you know, had been used to seeing the guy live there for so long and it was just so much stuff. And then all of a sudden the day came, right? The day came where he got evicted. And when he got evicted, it was like, you know, you have someone come knock on your door and they're like, yeah, you know, we're gonna move you out. And I remember he had like, his house was just full of stuff, like collectibles, toys, you know, it, he would just go collect things all the time, right? And I remember he was out on the street and I, I and I saw him and it, it was kind of the situation that I, I really couldn't help him because he was, he had really started to lose it, you know? Like after he lost his job, he was just, he, he wasn't the same person. Like he was literally a normal person, like normal, just like me, normal. But then he was just gone. Like, he, I, I couldn't even communicate with him anymore. Like, he, like he, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't even think he was on drugs or anything. But I guess the stress, the the life. I mean, maybe he's thinking about life. He's, like, maybe he was, I think he was, like, 45 years old. Couldn't go back to his family. Had no partner. Had no job. Didn't know what to do. Had no savings. Didn't re plan for retirement. D -d -d literally just, bam, right there. Right there. Right there. There's a lot of people like that in the city. There are a lot of people like that in the city, right? And the last day I remember seeing him, it was near, he had, I don't know how he did this. He had moved a whole bunch of stuff like behind Safeway and it was all on the bike line and it was just so much stuff, right? So much stuff. And I remember hearing him because I'd slowly cycled by and he was so gone. Like he, I, he, I'd cycle by a couple of times. He didn't even notice me, right? He didn't even notice me, dude. <laughs> like I remember once I waved and he was, didn't even know who I was, right? Just gone. And I was going by and he was saying that like, oh, it's okay. It's okay, I'm gonna move into another place. He was telling someone else on the street, no, I'm gonna move into another place. Like I got this other place lined up. I'm gonna move to this other place. And <sighs> went back the next day and all the stuff was gone. Every couple weeks, uh, every week or so, two weeks, two weeks, three weeks, the city comes by and cleans everything. I don't know what happened to him. I was the first friend. The second friend, he moved to Vegas. And the last time I heard from him, he was in Vegas homeless. But he didn't lose everything. And he didn't he didn't get, like, evicted. He didn't get kicked out on the street. He sort of, like, left. And he, he was sort of kind of just delusional, too. Like, when he was... He wasn't as bad as the, the first guy. But he was, like, his mind was just gone. He was just like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay in the city. I'm gonna stay in the city, you know, it's just it's not that bad, you know. Plus it's three thousand dollars a month. And his rent his place he was renting was like twelve hundred dollars a month. And he's talking about, yeah, I'm gonna rent this other place. Like I'm gonna leave for a little bit, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna rent this other place. It's only three thousand dollars a month, that's nothing. And I'm like, bro, like you, you don't even have money to give. Like you, bro, three thousand dollars like bro, you, you're gone. Like, you know, 
this is just one thing I, I've noticed with people, like the rent control thing. Um, I don't know too many other people that, like, like I said, I only know two people that this has happened to. You definitely hear about people saying that I've lived here for 20 years, I've lived here for 30 years, right? And now I'm on the street. And it just makes you wonder, like, huh, how did they get there? You know, like, what what led up to that? Like, because honestly, I think that the homeless situation in San Francisco, I think it's, it's like, I think it's almost like it's like it's manufactured almost because there's just so many things like that <laughs> that just don't add up. You know, it's just like all these, these, these nonprofits making so much money off of it. You know, we got leakage centers. If you don't know what a leakage center, it's a place where like people could literally go and do drugs and there's people to watch them like do drugs so they won't die. And they, they would rather have these centers so that people can go there and do drugs so the people won't do drugs on the street and tourists see them when they're walking by, you know? So, and then also, if, you know, if they're, they're not doing drugs on the street alone, chances are they're not going to die, like, on the street from an overdose because now you've got adult supervision to watch them. So, I don't know. This is just what the... What, what, what... Yeah, this is just insane. I mean, it's San Francisco, yo. Um, once again, I'm not making this video to, you know, to down, to talk bad on the city. Um, I'm just making this video to just be real. You know, it's just something, um, it's just, it's just, you know, an experience. And I, I've known two people. I've, I've seen this, this sort of thing happens too. And once again, people become homeless for so many different reasons, right? I'm not sitting here making this video saying that oh they went homeless because of rent no i'm not blaming on rent control um there, there are so many other reasons why people lose go homeless and find themselves on the streets in this city but anyway guys thanks a lot for watching i think i'm gonna wrap this video up like comment subscribe and peace out yo